We all know about investors like Warren Buffet and Peter Lynch. They have created massive wealth for investors. But none of them comes close to James Simons. Many consider him the greatest investor of all times. Simons was a maths teacher who started a hedge fund. For 30 years, his fund had an average annual return of 66%. This means an investment of 1000 rupees turned into 401 crore in 3 decades. Simon used quant based investing to achieve these returns. Now he passed away in May and we thought, why not look at quant based funds in India? Now there is another reason why quant funds in India attracted our attention. In the past two years, their AUM has grown by 90%. In fact, many fund houses have recently launched schemes in this space. Kotec Mutual Fund, for example, launched its quant fund in August last year and Motila Oswal did a few days back. There is also an ongoing quant fund NFO from Aditya Birla that will close on June 24th. Now, with the kind of development we have seen in artificial intelligence, quant based schemes could be the future of the mutual fund industry. So, let's examine these funds to understand where they stand today. Now, in this video, we will answer three main questions. First, how do quant funds invest? Then, we will see how these funds are different from other active funds. Finally, we will evaluate their performance. The findings of this video will be quite insightful if you invest in large and mid cap funds. So I recommend you watch it until the end. But before we begin, a quick update. You are watching this video on our English YouTube channel. Our Hindi channel is where you can see all videos in Hindi. Mein dekh sakte hain. And if you are or if you know someone who is interested in understanding the basics of finance, we also have a channel called 5 Minute Finance, where we cover the basics of finance. I have attached links to these channels in the description box below. So do check them out. All right. Let's first look at different quant funds in India and their investment strategies. These funds use quantitative tools to design algorithms that help them take investment decisions. Now that might have sounded a little technical, so let me break it down for you. The investment process of these funds can be divided into five parts. First, they define their investment universe. Now most funds in this case look at the top 200 stocks. So that's 100 large caps and the top 100 mid cap companies. Axis and Kotec are among the few quant funds that go beyond the universe of the top 200. Now comes step 2. Here, most fund houses use fundamentals to screen the stocks. Basically, at this stage, they eliminate the stocks they don't want to invest in. For example, the DSP quant fund eliminates stocks with high debt, inefficient capital allocation and poor earnings. Similarly, Kotec Quant Fund eliminates stocks with weak balance sheets, weak PNL, and weak governance. Now, after applying this filter, they get a list of fundamentally good companies. In the third step, they develop the algorithm to pick stocks. An algorithm is just a predefined set of instructions. And in the case of quant based investing, it's nothing but predefined rules that make investment decisions. Now, to come up with these predefined rules, each fund house does extensive historical research. They backtest the algorithm to see if the criteria they use to select stocks generated the best possible returns in different market scenarios of the past. Now, in the fourth step, they decide on the allocation to each stock. Let's say the fund house plans to invest in 40 to 50 stocks. At this stage, they decide the weight of each stock in the portfolio. And in the final step, the teams decide how frequently they should rebalance the portfolio. Now it can be monthly, quarterly or every six months. While this entire process is done without human intervention, the fund managers check corporate actions for each stock before investing. They can decide against investing in funds undergoing delisting, mergers, acquisitions or other such corporate actions. To understand this better, let's look at the DSP Quant Fund. Once the fund house gets a list of fundamentally good stocks, it scores them on different parameters such as quality, value and growth. The fund house then adds the scores and uses it for the final selection. Now comes the part where weights are assigned to each stock. In the case of DSP, the model considers factors such as single stock exposure, sector exposure and liquidity to assign weights and build the portfolio. All right. Most quant funds follow the model that we just discussed. However, some fund houses are taking unique approaches. Take the Aditya Birla's new quant fund as an example. 
This scheme doesn't look at the top 200 stocks as its investment universe. Instead, the fund will look at the top 75 large and mid-cap stocks held by the top 15 fund houses. The idea here is simple. Large fund houses have already done the research and picked the fundamentally sound companies with high growth potential. Aditya Billa eliminates companies with poor earnings from this universe of 75 stocks. Only businesses with a good 5-year track record qualify. After this, qualified stocks are evaluated using the momentum factor. This means the fund house looks at the stock returns for the past 6 months. Finally, weights are allocated to the shortlisted stocks. Now the weights are assigned so that the overall portfolio volatility is minimized. Now you must understand one thing about quant based funds. They are rebalanced regularly. This allows the management team to sell stocks that no longer fit the model and include qualifying businesses. But this can also lead to high churn in their portfolios. Tata Quant Fund for example has a portfolio turnover ratio of 386. A ratio of 100 means that the entire portfolio was churned in the last one year. Okay, now that we have looked at the models, let's understand the difference between quant based funds and actively managed schemes. If you look at the investment process, there is very little human intervention in quant funds. The model drives most decisions. This is the key difference. In most active funds, the fund manager's goal is to spot multi baggers early on. They use historical performance to judge a company's performance and then combine that with qualitative information to make the final call. For this, they may visit plants, talk to the management and understand their vision for the business. The fund manager's experience and judgment are crucial in case of actively managed funds. On the other hand, quant funds use historical data to perform predictive analysis on which stocks can do good in the future. They are heavily driven by data. So if something cannot be defined mathematically, it is unlikely to be factored in by quant funds. Now, there are multiple advantages to this style of investing. As machines take most calls, the investment decisions are free from human biases. Similarly, because everything is mathematically defined, it is easier to identify what went wrong with the stocks that did not work. Accordingly, the fund management team can make changes to the model. Third, the fund strategy can be executed consistently and in a disciplined way. Ok, we just looked at the investment style of these funds. Next, let's see their performance. When we started this analysis, the biggest challenge we faced was the limited performance history of these funds. Out of the 9 funds, only 2 had a performance history of more than 5 years. So, to include more funds in this study, we looked at the performance over a 3 year period. This way, we could evaluate 6 schemes. Even though 3 years is not the right time to analyze equity funds, this was the best we had. To evaluate the returns, we looked at SIP and rolling returns. Let's start with the SIP returns first. In the last 3 years, the SIP returns of the 6 quant funds averaged around 23.6%. To understand how good or bad their performance was, we compared quant funds with different indices and active funds. For the passive options, we looked at Nifty 200, Nifty 200 Quality 30, Nifty 200 Momentum 30 and the large mid cap 250 index. In active funds, we looked at large and mid cap fund category. Now we selected these for comparison because the investment universe of these indices is similar to where quant funds invest. Of the 4 indices, to underperform the quant funds. This include the Nifty 200 index and the Nifty 200 quality 30 index. The other two indices and actively managed schemes outperform the SIP returns of quant funds. The underperformance was particularly significant compared to the Nifty 200 momentum 30 index. The momentum index generated a returns of 36.95%. The SIP returns of quant funds was 23.6%. Next, we looked at the rolling returns. In this case, we first looked at the multiple one and a half year returns between June 2021 and June 2024. And then we calculated the median returns. With median returns of 15.02%, quant funds were the best performers. This means that 50% of the time, the returns of these funds were higher than 15.02%. Now, what was surprising here was the performance of the momentum index. 
the momentum index had a median return of 10.51 percent. This means that 50 percent of the time the index generated returns of less than 10.51 percent. So, even though the momentum index delivered good SIP returns, it is not consistent. It's possible that most of the returns come in a short span of time, which could mean that this index is volatile. All right, let's summarize our findings. Overall, the quant funds have not done badly. Their SIP returns were better than Nifty 200 and Nifty 200 quality 30. And they were close to the large mid cap 250 index and active large and mid cap funds. And even though the Nifty 200 Momentum 30 index was way ahead in SIP returns, when we saw median rolling returns, quant funds actually did better, which shows that they are more consistent. All right, let's now evaluate how well these funds have managed volatility. For this, we use a metric called a standard deviation. If standard deviation sounds technical, there's just one thing you should know. A lower standard deviation means lower volatility, which in turn means lower risk. Here, Quant funds rank third. Only the Nifty 200 and the Nifty 200 quality 30 indices had lower volatility than the Quant funds. The momentum index was on the other end of the spectrum with the highest volatility. Large mid cap 250 index and actively managed large mid cap funds had volatility similar to that of Quant funds. But it's difficult to judge these funds by looking separately at returns and volatility. So, we decided to combine the two metrics and look at the risk adjusted returns. This will tell us how much returns these funds generated for every unit of risk they took. Here too, quant funds had the best risk adjusted returns. They generated a 1.47% returns per unit of risk, followed by the nifty large mid cap 250 index and actively managed large and mid cap funds. These two had risk adjusted returns of 1.38%. The other three investment options, Nifty 200, Nifty 200 Quality 30 and Nifty 200 Momentum 30 were at the bottom. Now, based on this analysis, quant funds seem like a good option if you are looking for one scheme that gives you exposure to large and mid cap stocks. If we look at the individual funds in this category, Tata Quant Fund has the best risk adjusted returns. Nippon and ICICI Quant Funds have the second and third best risk adjusted returns. However, most of these funds are new, so don't go overboard if you decide to invest in them. Also, each fund is unique, so you would also need to understand how they invest. And if you wish to invest in the NFO of Aditya Birla Quant Fund, you can do it on the ET Money app. With this, we have come to the end of this video. We hope you found the analysis insightful. And if you did, please share it with your friends and family. I'll see you soon with another video. Till then, take care. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.